What is going on YouTube? On today's episode, I'd like to talk to you about 35 inch tires on a Jeep Wrangler TJ and what needs to be done in order to accommodate them. Please stay tuned to check that out. Welcome back to The Garage Couple. For those of you that are just tuning in, my name is Greg. I drive this modified Jeep Wrangler TJ. My wife is Ollie and she drives the red Jeep Wrangler JK. And we like to make review videos, install videos, and we just generally like to show how easy it is and how cheap it could be to modify your own Jeep Wrangler. Anything from rock lights to winch to bumpers to doors, tire carriers. We like to review it all. We like to install it all and show it in clear HD step-by-step -step videos. So if that sounds rad to you, then go ahead and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of the content. There's a lot of information on the web about the Jeep Wrangler and 35 inch tires. Now this is the 4.0 engine. It's a six cylinder engine. This one is a manual, which makes makes a significant difference when trying to compare what you need to do for a 35 inch tire. These are the 35 inch tires that I am running. These are 35 by 12.5 by 15 and they are made by BF Goodrich. These are the KM2s. These are mud tires. We both run the same set of tires. We love them. So I'd like to review everything that you're going to need to get the job done. So there's a couple of things you're going to need to think about. Let's start up front. The very first thing that I would think about when wanting to go 35 inch tires is lift. You're gonna need more or less about four inches of lift. You could do it either with a body lift combination with a suspension lift, or you can just do all suspension lift, whatever you'd like. The way that we did it was I took a suspension off of a 2015 Wrangler Rubicon, took the springs and shocks from that, put them on the Jeep, put a little bit of a leveling kit because we added all this heavy accessories to our Jeep. And then I did about 1.25 inches of body lift and I have plenty of room to articulate. The next thing you're gonna wanna think about are wheel spacers or replacement wheels itself. Now, it's possible to run 35s on the factory rims. However, the back spacing is not enough to do a full U-turn. You're gonna start rubbing things like control arms, track bars, that kind of thing. And so you're gonna need to space out your wheels. These are aftermarket wheels. And on top of that, I have two inch spacers here. So I'll put the links to the spacers that I used in the description below. I've been running them for years and years without any issues. Just make sure you go with ones that are hub centric so you don't have to deal with any problems down the line. I'm also gonna show you some driving footage uh, of both the braking and the accelerating with the 35s with the stock gearing. So stay tuned to check that out as well. So now that we've spoken about the lift and also the wheel spacers, we need to talk about stopping power. Brakes become very important when you go to this large tire size just because there's a lot more mass rotating as well as diameter. So you're gonna need stronger brakes. Now the ones from the factory, when you replace with Black Magic brake pads or any other similar brake pads, they do a great job in stopping the Jeep. I've never had any issues with braking. I'm able to stop the Jeep safely every single time without any issues. So for that reason, you don't need any big brake kits or anything like that. So that's not a whole lot of money to spend. Now, the wheel spacers are about $80. The lift kit, the way I did it with the Jeep Rubicon lift, I, it cost me more or less $70 to do that. And then you have to think about brakes. So, so far, a grand total is a little north of $200. Not a whole lot uh, to, to get yourself ready for 35s. Then there's actually the cost of the 35 inch tires as well. Depending on where you get them, you could find them used or you can get them brand new. They're about 200 to 250 a tire. So make sure you factor that in as well. The next thing you wanna think about when going to 35 inch tires is the gearing. Now, depending on what model you have, whether you have the automatic versus the manual, you need to re-gear. So the Rubicons come with 4.10 gears and the non-Rubicons come, the manual ones at least, mine came with a 3.73 gear ratio. Now, this gear ratio for some isn't enough. So they re-gear to 488s, you can go even 454s, that kind of thing. But for me, for my, my driving style, is more than enough. The, and I wanna repeat that, more than enough for me. Many people say you have to re-gear, but I have not re-geared. Now there's a lot of myths involved with re-gearing. One, it does not give you better gas mileage. You do not get better gas mileage by re-gearing. That, that is the reason why manufacturers give you lower gears from the factory, because they're trying to increase and improve gas mileage and not necessarily performance. Now that's not one of the mods that go hand in hand with performance and efficiency. Like air intake, down, uh, the exhaust, that kind of thing will increase your efficiency and your performance, but re-gearing will not. That is a myth. 
The next myth about re-gearing is that if you re-gear, you have a lower chance of destroying your axles, your axle shafts, that kind of thing. That is a huge myth. With re-gearing, you put more power down, which causes more stress to the components. So you have a higher chance of messing up your axles if you have re-geared to higher numerical number gear. Now for us, we do a lot of highway driving. We can get by in fifth gear, no problem running down the highway 65, 70 miles an hour. And if there's any uphill portions, we can go ahead and drop it into fourth and continue. Now with automatic transmissions, that's not necessarily possible. So with those, you might have to re-gear. For a manual 4.0 TJ running on 35 inch tires, you absolutely don't have to re-gear if you don't want to. Now, if you're gonna go rock crawling and be going very slow on different trails, then sure, it, you might see benefit. But if you're mostly on the streets and only seldomly on the trails, unfortunately, it's not a bad way to go about it. All right, let's take this thing for a spin and see, show you the RPM. I had the speedometer corrected, so everything you're about to see is completely corrected. That is no mistake. I have 262,000 miles on this thing. Still runs loud. Let me fasten my seatbelt so we don't get that annoying light and also because life matters. <laughs> All right, sorry about the glare, but I'm at a complete standstill here. Gonna put it into first gear and let's go. This is how, we, how I start. Completely off the clutch at this point. Still, this is all first gear, as you can see here. It feels plenty powerful. It feels plenty powerful in first gear. Now, let me... So I'm gonna hit the gas just a little bit. Engine's still pretty cold. I don't want to push it too hard, but look, this is this. See, that was a first gear pull. Not bad, not a bad pull at all. Now let's see, drop it into second, running at around 10 miles an hour, no problem here. We'll still pick up and go, just as you see. Exactly to my liking. Now here is a little bit of an incline, as you can see. Sorry about that, doing this one-handed. Now let's go up this incline. I'm in second gear. No problem. This is what the RPMs look like. So now I can give you an idea of the brakes. I'm going downhill, as you can see downhill, about 20 miles an hour, not a whole lot, but I will hit the brakes pretty aggressively. Let's see how it stops. And that I think is pretty good. And I could do so at higher miles per hour, but I feel like you get the picture. I feel like it's not the safest thing for me to be driving with one hand, so I'll just leave it here. I want to thank you all for watching the channel. I hope this video was helpful when deciding to go with 35s. Oh, one final question that's pretty common. I get about 14 to 16 miles per gallon combined almost every single time. It wasn't that much better when I had the factory 29 inch tires. It was maybe a one mile per gallon more. But I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching our channel. If you'd like the content and if you want to enter yourself for free giveaways, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. And again, I thank you so much for your support. Have a great day.